Sharon, what are you doing, baby? Eating crab sticks and alioli. Is alioli? Alioli. Alioli. That's a garlic dip, that, folks. It's really tasty. A bit salty, though. Yeah, it's salty. Right, so we're on our way out now. It's, uh, what's today, Sha? Thursday. Thursday. We're on our way out. We're going to go to um, East Coast Meats. We're going to pick up some... Um, Steak. For tonight. Mm. We're going to have surf and turf tonight, folks. But also, someone has just asked Sharon, and it's something we've been meaning to do for a while now, they want to see scotch eggs in the air fryer. How did you get hold of them? Magic. As if by magic. Well, where's the, where's the uh, uh, what's it called? Sausage the, meat. Sausage meat, yes. I've got to go to Hagworth and get that. So we're going there to get that, folks. So and come along about, with what, us. What about the breadcrumbs? I've got some in the cupboard. Right, let's on, let's get out, let's get to Hagworthingham, get down East Coast Meats and let's get what we're going to need for later on. Right, so it's, it's actually quite a mild day out here today, folks. Am I driving? Yeah, you usually do. Of course I do. It's your job. Right, eh? It's your job. My job? Oh, yeah. Well, as you can see, folks, I've just made the statement that uh, the weather looks good and it started to rain. <laughs> Five minutes into it, Sharon. I oh, know. Whatever you say, it does the opposite. So we're just on our way down now to take Charlotte's phone. That's Jimmy's um, fiance. She's left her phone at home and uh, we're just dropping it off to her place at work first of all, we can it to be. And uh, give it back to her. Then we'll make our way down to East Coast Meats in Hagworthingham and pick up some lovely steak for tonight and also some sausage meat for our, what's it called? Scotch eggs. Scotch eggs, baby. Right, here we go. We've just pulled up at um, East Coast Meats just in front of us there, right next to Rachel's Cafe, where we've been quite a few times, me and Lee Van Camp. And uh, this is on the main road to Skeggy, anyway, so uh, from uh, Horncastle, if you're interested. So that's exactly where we are, folks. There, look, on the back of their van there. Well spotted, baby. Thanks. So, yeah, this is the main road, folks. That's Horncastle that way. And coming down there, Skeg not like in the camera normally. All the way down there, you go down there, it leads you straight to Skegness, Sharon, wouldn't it? Yeah, Skeg Vegas. Um, we just don't noticed over there. We've seen it before this over here, folks, but we just have a look on this big wall over here. Well, it's not a wall, is it? It's, um, it's a little cliff. It's a little cliff, yeah. It looks like a cliff, doesn't it? But it's got all these holes in, folks. Look. Don't know what they are. Whether it's animals or, or whatever, look. They're like little brick holes, aren't they? Is it they? sandstone, this? I'm not sure. Look at that, look. Look at that, look. Yeah, it is a rock, Sharon. Is it? Yeah. Well, I say it's a rock. It's like sandstone. It's soft. But uh, yeah, all them holes in that, folks, look. Whether animals have carved it out or what, Sharon, I'm not too sure. They go right back and all. Yeah, they go quite a long way in, don't they? Anyway, any ideas, folks? Let us know in the comments section. And we're going inside. What have you got, baby? What have you found? You wanted steak. <laughs> oh, that's a tall hawk steak, yeah. isn't it? That's a monster, isn't it? How much is that? That one's 20 pounds. 20 pounds. There's one there for 16. I'll tell you what, though, if you bought a steak meal in a you pay, pub, that, you you pay about 23 quid yeah. now for something like that. And you cook it at home and you have a far bigger one. You have a whopper. Nice. These are good. Five pound of diced mints for 18 pounds. But that goes a long way, doesn't it? It does go a long way. Bag it up. You've got these uh, belly fat joints down there, folks. Look at that. Look. Sirloin. 79 quid, look. Yeah, but you cut that up. That's sirloin steak, isn't it? Yeah, but you cut that up, Martin. You think how much you get? Yeah. I find that's not a bad deal, is it? That, um... No, they're good, they are. The rindless, um... Is it pork, Sharon? Yeah. But you'll get a lot of pork steaks out of that as well. Yeah. So if you look at that piece of brisket there, look, it's £37. That's big. But then you get that one for 63 And you cut that up, you've yeah. got about 300 joints. Yeah. Oh, what's that? But you definitely get quality Rib meat. Eye. What? My favourite ribeye steak. Uh, look at that, folks. Yeah, 108 pounds. How many pounds, steaks that? would you get out of that? Yeah, I know. Lovely. There we go. So we normally get them, folks. Look, you see them there. 
that's what you call a butcher's sausage that they make them on site sort of thing you're paying 21 pounds there but you're getting such a lot of weight there as well there's 2.2 kilograms of weight there so uh, yeah that's that's why we prefer a decent sausage and not a patch oh, on the blinking cheap ones you, you like a normal cheap one though yeah don't i do you? like a good one and a cheap one i'm not proud right, oh, we're, we're looking free, for some we'll steak the, hey? the free river look at them they're looking nice aren't they sharon three bits of ribeye eh? who's that yeah. going to be for Jimmy likes sirloin, doesn't he? Can I have them three bits of ribboy? Ribboy. 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 Superb. And then, have you, can I have one bit of um, sirloin? Yes, sir. Do you want like a decent sized one or a small one? Decent sized one, yeah. Size, yeah. yeah. So, always some good stuff here, folks, as you well know. <laughs> and uh, they're, yeah. they're always accommodating as well. They'll always help you out if you want a certain like piece and all that. Anything else, Martin? Hey? Anything else? Uh, I can't think off the top of my head. How are we off for, for bacon? Do you want sausages while we're here? We do want sausages. You might as well get some, Sharon. Yeah. What ones are these? Take them. They're the plain. I like You want the plain pork? Yeah. Yeah, Sharon likes the plain pork one, so we'll have some of them. Don't get some bacon, love, but thin cut, not the thick cut. Go on in, off you go. Oh, <laughs> I'll have that bottom tray of plain pork sausages. They're rude. <laughs> no, behind. Behind. That's, that's the one. <laughs> Yeah, what one do you like? The thinner cut one, you said? Yeah, we've had yeah. the thick They do it in the thinner thin and the thick cut, don't See, they? that's the thick and it's very thick. Yeah, but I don't mind that, but Sharon likes the thinner one. Crushed up a lot better, doesn't it? Mm. Well, they've got streaky there, though, haven't they? Yeah. Thank you. So there you go. How's that, baby? You got you had enough? Should we get some of that pet food for the dogs and just the what? boil it up? Pet food for the dogs. What is that? What is that pet food down there you got? Basically, trimmings off our mince and stew. Uh, if we do any chicken fillets, we trim the fillets off that. Put it in gravy, couldn't I? Mind your mic. It's not in there, but generally. Just yeah, I'll take yeah. that as Go well. Go on, we'll take that boys. as well. For me, little Give the boys. dogs a treat. Yeah. There you go, see? Dogs get a blinking good meal out of it and all, folks. I have got a couple of freezers in here as well where you can buy some frozen stuff as well. Yeah, look at them, look. Minted. Two minted Barnsley lamb. Look at them. Well, I bet they're tasty. But again, if you're having a special meal, so I do, isn't it? So we've got some lovely blinking pasties there. Right? Look at that, look. Just cool. put them in the old air fryer. Be, be good, wouldn't it? Oh, I am, aren't I? <laughs> what made you go all blue then? You've gone all blue, haven't you? What's gone blue? What's your? Yeah. They've got their new uniforms on, folks. Look at that, look. They're like blue coats, look. Because of all these subscribers coming into you, isn't it? It scares me more on barbie Yeah, well, you're ready, aren't you? You're there. <laughs> right, that's us, that's us sorted then. I hope you've got the best Lincoln cheese sausage in the world on that. What one's no, that? Go on. The no, the pork. No, the pork. The, uh, the best? They're the best Lincoln cheese sausages money can buy. Have we had them before? I think we have, Sharon, haven't we? Yeah, but I don't like Lincoln cheese sausages. Oh, I love them. No. I love them. You've a bit of spice in your life, haven't you? Of course you have. <laughs> As oh, you can see, it? folks, he's even bringing it out well, for us. Look at that, look. They bring it home and cook it, couldn't they? See you later. Bye. I could carry it, but I'm holding the camera, you see. It's heavy, isn't it, that camera? <laughs> nice Looking one. You as always. Yes. You, you, you're a regular viewer, your wife, isn't she? Yeah, absolutely. You should say hello to her now. Yeah, absolutely. Say hello to the missus, go on. <laughs> he does do a bit of work, look. <laughs> Excellent. Right, that's us talking to them, folks. Right, so we're going to wait and make our way home now, and we'll see you oh, when we get messy, back. Oh, okay, thanks mean? a lot. Right, folks, today we are out and about. We're at East Kirkby Aviation Centre. Aviation Centre, and this is the home of the Lancaster Bomber NX. What is it, Chef? 611. NX 611, and loads of other stuff. We're looking forward to it, kids. How about you, Mummy? Nanny? Oh, I am. I like it here. Coming in, let's go.
So I'm while we're here, folks, this would have been the naffy, believe it or not. And uh, this is where the restaurant part is. So we're going to have something to eat. I think they do a breakfast here as well. So we're going to have yes. a little look at that. There we go. I was going to have a breakfast, folks, but apparently that stops at 12 o'clock and it's 20 past 12. Thank so you. I'm going for a pasty and chips. Sharon, what are you going for, Sharon? Cottage pie. Cottage pie for Sharon and the kids are having. What are you having? Sausage and chips. They're, They're having sausage and chips. So we'll see you in a minute. Right, we're just coming out of the naffy now, folks. And first place you want to go to, Sharon, is what? Off to the toilets, folks. That's the main hangar over there. We'll be visiting That's that in a minute. Kids. There's the uh, watchtower over there, which uh, is yeah. as it was back uh, in 1943, yes, folks. Now, yeah. And this place has actually been on a TV program called Most Haunted as well, <laughs> as they're supposed to be a lone airman that they've seen many a time walking across here to the actual watchtower and he's been seen on many other occasions apparently and also in the main hangar they went in there and they had some experiences in there which will be going in there very very shortly folks so we'll let Sharon unload and then we'll come back to you you forgot to mention flog it have been here too have they yeah oh there you go I didn't know that because they flogged it <laughs> so while we're waiting for Sharon let's have a little look at the uh guide map that you get when you actually come in so there's the guide map there and obviously it's uh there's the, there's the actual lancaster bomber there folks the front of it there it's called just jane apparently there's only two lancaster bombers in the whole world that are actually airworthy one of them is further down the road in coningsby rf coningsby which you'll see that in the the lincolnshire skies every time there's an event on and the other one apparently is canada and a few years back we actually vlogged the canada one come over to the uk and they both flew in the air at the same time, which was uh, very historic. And I, do, I think we've got a video somewhere of that as well on the channel. Uh, this one, we've been here on many, many occasions, and they do taxi runs with it. Just here, it taxis out here on its own, under its own steam. And then they turn it around and take it down to the end there, run the engines up. And that's one of the ways they're getting the money to restore it back to hopefully airworthiness condition. So uh, that's something, it's an ongoing project. And this whole site was bought and the Lancaster was bought here by the Panton brothers many, many years ago. And the, the way they fund the uh, renovations and restorations for the Lancaster is by obviously taxiing it throughout the uh, summer months. And in the winter pump months, they take it apart and do the restoration work on it. So they have got a planned schedule up to 2026 and uh, it's coming on. And yeah, so they're still actively working, but we'll see that in a minute. We'll have a little look round, and as I say, we'll show you some of the other sites here at East Kirby. Right, okay, Open in we go. Sesame. In we go to the main oh. hangar at East Kirby, and you're going to see the Lancaster bomber. Oh. Wow, look at that, folks. That is it. That is the beast that's being restored at the moment, folks. Undergoing its restoration. Look at that. Let's just show you around it a bit. That obviously is the under bomb carriage there with some um, bombs already attached there, as you can see. And can you imagine the whole scale of this thing there, where this would have been flying over the coastline on the way to Berlin to drop its bombs? Absolutely fantastic. There's a graphic on the side there of just Jane. There's the old uh, Rose, Rolls Royce Merlin engines there, as you can see. Four of them on this plane. So we're situated just under the wing now, folks. Look at the size of them rudders, look. Absolutely amazing. Now, I've actually been in this plane many years ago when we visited uh, RF East Kirby with uh, one of the ex-pilots, squadron leader Jacko Jackson, who fortunately now is no longer with us, but. Um, 
he uh, in invited us down for his book signing. And uh, we've actually been inside uh, the plane, entering there at the rear and walking all the way through right up to the cockpit there. An absolutely amazing experience there, wasn't it, Sharon? You remember that? What's that? When we went inside that. I didn't go in, only you went in. Oh, I went in, sorry, yeah. But uh, absolutely fantastic. And can you imagine that thing? Look at the size of this rear tail section there, folks. Look at that, look. When they're in the air, you don't get to see it, the, the, the actual size of the thing. But coming around here, this is the rear gun turret where you'd have one lone gunner, rear gunner, he would have been called, and he would have been pumping out these two machine guns there at the enemy in the air, just sitting at the back there. Look at that, absolutely fantastic. And apparently the skies over Lincolnshire during the war used to be black with the amount of uh, Lancaster bombers that used to take off to go on their expeditions across the, over to Germany. So loads of memorabilia here, folks. And let's take a look at this uh, propeller section here, which would have been dug up off of the coastline somewhere from a crashed plane recovered at Wrangell in Lincolnshire in 1983. Look at that. You just imagine the force that was hit the ground, that, that propeller, look, for it to be bent up like that. Absolutely amazing. And this would have been the uh, Bristol Blenheim aircraft, which we've just seen them propellers for, folks. And as you can see there, some of the stuff that they've actually dug up out of the ground. There's a piston over the back there, the old exhaust valves there. Just a mass of parts that you don't get to see anymore. And that was uh, no computers back then, folks. That was an air position indicator used on the Lancashire, uh, Lancaster bombers. No computers here. Now, we won't purposely show you absolutely everything here because obviously if you want to visit this place, you will leave some to your imagination. But look at this here, the old V12, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. V12 engine there, and that comes again out of the Lancaster bomber there. That's the Lincolnshire Aircraft Recovery Group who've actually found these. And again, these would have been dug up out of the ground. Amazing pieces of kit. And again, simple technology. Look at that. Eight valves per cylinder, two inlet valves and two exhaust valves. Camshaft running through the middle there. Spinning down to a common crankshaft there, which in turn turns your propeller. And there you go. And as you can see there, oh, sorry, this is the uh, Lockheed P-38J Lightning. So this is a little reconstruction of the plane which they dug up. Uh, the P-51C Mustang. And uh, they actually go for, I won't read all this for you now, folks. You can do that if you do actually a visit. But you can actually see how the engines used to be situated at the front of the planes there. Very much like a Spitfire. And there's your little cockpit there. And the, uh, the rear cockpit there as well, as you can see. And this one here, I think it's a remainder of a Spitfire. And that, again, as I say, had the V12 engine in. Is it V12? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, V12 engine in. That was Spitfire VBBL655. And have we got some details of the actual person who flew it here? Oh, that was in memory of his brother. That was his brother there who, who actually flew this aircraft there. Absolutely amazing. And if I remember rightly, when Most Haunted did the um, series in here, they actually stood around here and they did get some sort of indications of people... Uh, some sort of sensations around this actual aircraft itself folks amazing so when you see that picture of that gentleman there folks hard to imagine that he was actually sitting in this cockpit when that plane was being flown and when it went down absolutely amazing how historic is that here's the remainders of a de Havilland goblin engine folks from vampire T2 WZ429 recovered from 30 foot down at Sutterton Dow, Dow Dyke. There you go, look at that, look. That was in the ground, 30 feet down. Here, yeah, folks, that just shows the impact when these things do hit the ground. That piston there, which is sticking out the bottom of the um, crankshaft there, would have been pointing straight up and going up and down, up and down in that sort of position. Just like the other ones further the back there, you probably can't see them, but uh, as you can see, it's hit the ground with such force that it's pushed out the side, bent the crankcase, uh, broken the crankcase and popped out the side of the engine. So just to give you some sort of indication on how these 
aircrafts were found, folks. You can see there in these pictures how far down they have to dig to actually find the stuff which they've uh, got on display here, well below the surface there, look. Engines, there's a propeller there, look, under the ground, look, under about, I don't know, six foot of earth there, for example. And there's a Merlin engine there, which has just been dug out of the ground there, look. Merlin engines, obviously, were in the Lancaster bombers, amongst other planes as well. Mm. Yeah, so we're purposely not going to show you everything, folks, just to give you a little taste of what this is all about, this um, aviation centre. And over here at the back of the hangar is where you can see they're doing a lot of the uh, restoration stuff on site here. So you can actually see this stuff going on throughout the uh, winter period there. We're just coming out of the winter period now, folks. So obviously restoration would have stopped. And they're actually replacing mm -hmm. sections of the fuselage and obviously engine wings and stuff like that just to... Uh, get this thing in an airworthy condition. It's actually going to take four million pounds, the whole restoration, to get it airworthy. So it's not just the uh, Lancaster bomber they got here, folks. A lot of period planes as well. And this one, for example, is a North American B-25J Mitchell. There you go. I've not heard of this one before, but um, you can't imagine someone actually sitting in there and uh, firing a gun out of that little hole there, look even down to this sort of thing here. What is this, Shell? Percival Proctor 4. Wow. And look at that. That's uh, made out of wood. Look. That's made out of wood, folks. Look. That could be... Is that First World War? That would be... I'm not sure. You may be able to see yeah, it down 1941. There. Oh, 1941. There we go. So this is showing you how the uh, Lancaster undercarriage is actually taken up into the plane, folks. Look at that, look. Just simple hydraulics by the looks of it. Here, yeah, look. The Lancaster tyre is still the largest aircraft tyre in production. Wow, look at that. Who would have thought that, folks? By Dunlop Tyres. Wow, look at that, folks. Some nice um, stained glass there, which I haven't seen before, Sharon. No. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. And there's another one here, folks. Look. Just celebrating the 50th anniversary of the formation of the 617 uh, Squadron. Absolutely lovely, and you can actually touch it. Look at that, look. Look how vivid them colours are, look at that. How superb is that? Right, now this, folks, is actually one of the bounce-in bounce in bombs. Bounce-in bombs, that's the size of them. Do you want to stand next to that, Shell, just to show you the size of the actual bouncing bombs? There you go, absolutely a enormous. And they, they used to spin up, uh, rotate before they was actually dropped so that they would create the momentum to skip along the water. And there's actually one there of these. There it is there, Martin. What? I'm sure how it went along the water. Yeah, there was actually one of these, or one of these uh, prototypes set up in the Petwood Hotel. It, it, as you drive into the Petwood Hotel in Whittle Spa, where we live, you can see the remnants of one of these bombs sitting there in the grounds. It's all rusted. but um, So the 617 Squadron actually had an officer's mess in the Petwood Hotel. And uh, as I say, that's dedicated to the uh, 617 Squadron as well, if you actually visit the Petwood Hotel there. They've got their own bar, which is, they've kept and preserved, but one of these is found there as well. So the bomb used to spin up wow. uh, anti-clockwise by the looks of it. And then as it's released, it's still spinning, skip, skip, skip along the water. And when it hit the wall, because of its um, the way it was spinning, it would go down and spin anti-clockwise, which would pull it when it hit the water into the bottom of the dam. And that's what caused the uh, explosion make their writing, down isn't it? below the water line, so Amazing technology, all designed by Barn Wallace, and that's breached the Ruhr dams all them years ago, folks. So again, a whole collection there of World War II memorabilia there, as well as some information which you can pick up and actually read on these little book stands there. This and opening one of these down, books there, you can actually right see the uh, 617 Squadron, the air and ground crew in front of the Lancaster taking the RAF Woodall Spa between 1944 and 1945. How about that, folks? And RAF Woodall Spa is literally just up the road from where we live.
So as you can see, folks, the hangar is very, very interesting. There's literally loads more to see in here. We haven't shown you nowhere near everything in here. So let's have a look at the rest of the site now and see what that's got to offer. Right, so just coming into the briefing room, folks. And this is where they would have had their briefing done, just in this little arch, uh, little shed, so to speak. Very echoey in here. So they would have been spoken to in front of a screen pretty similar to this and talked about the uh, raiding question. And I didn't realise, Shall, look, they had uh, an Audi back then. I was done their shopping in Audi. Stop it. Use your Audi. It smell look. old in here. It does smell old, yeah. The next one along here is the billet hut. Well, now, what would they have used the uh, billet hut for? Oh, that's probably been their sleeping oh show, wouldn't God. it? Their little lodgings or whatever. Look, and as you can see, folks, coming in here, we can't go no further. That's the sort of uh, environment that these airmen used to live in when they was here, staying on the base. No bikes here and all that. Yeah. An old um, log burner or fire burner in the centre there. Just one chimney going up through the roof. So we're going to make our way through to the tower now, folks. This tower. is the original tower from the 1940s, 1943, probably something like that. And this is the one, as I said, where this um, the ghost oh, of the airman is seen walking along here to the actual tower. Look, the gun this thing has been there. seen on many, many occasions. All the bikes left there, look, that's what it would have been like. Here we go, in we go, folks. Period bikes there as well, folks. Look at that, look. So, in we go to the watchtower. Here we go. Wow. This is obviously the uh, lower ground radio room here. Can you imagine walking around here at night, Sharon? Oh, yeah. Hey. That door there just looking at Oh yeah. <laughs> All the old original equipment in here as well, folks. Look at that. Look. Oh Harry, there's the typewriters. Through there, Shall. I don't think you can go in there. That would have been the teleprinter room. Look at that. Look. Amazing. Let's come out of here and just have a look through here. That's what they wore, look the women. Their yeah. uniform. Well, just loads of information in here, folks, of uh, all the different crew that obviously come from in and around this area loads for you to look at you can look at a lot of these old files i would imagine just work your way through so you can spend quite a long time here loads of personal artifacts oh, there, sure. yeah look at that. all the old original logbooks all been reproduced for you to look at folks just to see how things were done back then so you've got a whole list of the casualties just from this operation here alone from here folks look at that look and this is where they fell the 164 lancasters lost from here 164 of them planes that you've seen in there, that big Lancaster, 164 of them were lost from here. Coming over the UK there, as you can see, all the way over to the different parts of the uh, European continent there, and where they eventually fell and lost. So amazing. There's three butlers on here. Is there three butlers? Wow, amazing. So Sharon was just saying, if you had family here and you didn't really know much about them. All the records are here for you to look at where you can find possible members of your family. If you knew that your great grandfather was uh, an air pilot of the uh, this area, no no doubt you can find these records here maybe. Mm. So coming out here we're looking into a little room there where obviously they would have sat and had a little chat and a fag maybe, a little debriefing maybe. Right, coming up the stairs now, folks. This is the main watchtower staircase. And again, I think when the, the crew of Most Haunted come here, they did hear footsteps in the early hours of the morning when they was doing their recording here. So we're just coming up the same staircase. 
as many, many people would have done I over the years of that era. There you go, look at that. The Morse code room. And then coming out of this door here, again, you had another little relaxation room, so to speak. Where they used to have their cups of tea and perhaps down wine with a bit of music there. And then, then the nerve center through here where they would plan the operations of the planes coming in and out. Hello, Aquire T. Tommy. You are clear for straight in approach. You will be number five to land. Runway 20, QFE 1023. Switch to channel B, over. So, I mean, if you've never been here before, folks, you want to really sense the atmosphere of what it was probably like in 1943 under these sort of conditions. Just pop down to East Kirby Aviation mm. Centre and have a little look around here. Fascinating. So there's your fire protection, folks, of the era. Look at that, look. Big cylinder of water there. Which you'd have to probably pump up. And that would have been it. With some old period bikes there as well. Look at that, look. Just coming over here, folks, we did see one of these at our Tatchell Fort visit with, with what we've done. And that is an aircraft arrestor there. This one obviously hasn't been restored. The one at Tatchell Fort had been restored. And this is the thing that sits at the end of the runway and stops a plane. If you've got a short runway, it puts a wire across and catches hold of the plane, and slows the plane down with the uh, gears and spring mechanisms in that. And uh, this one obviously hasn't been restored, but uh, yeah, what a fascinating piece of kit. And you normally have the uh, load of the plane there. You've got the Sterling, the Lancaster, the Halifax, and you would pull a lever and get that pointer down to tension the, the ropes up to the certain weight of the plane so that it wouldn't overshoot the runway. And as I say, that one hasn't been restored. If you're ever in um, Tatchell Thorpe, uh, just before the um, 1940s weekend at Woodall Spa in mid-June, I think it is, have a look around there. You'll see one of them that's actually been restored. Right, so this is the Escape Museum, folks. Let's have a little look in here. Have you seen that late at night? Oh, that's a parachute, isn't it? Yeah, that's a bit eerie, isn't it? Look at that. <laughs> is it this the place where they got that coat, Sharon? In here? I don't know. I think it was. I might be wrong. We'll have a look in a minute. What's this, baby? Oh, he's got a gun in his back. Wow, this is what a bit of typical reenactment re there, folks. Look, of uh, getting caught as a spy, for example. Wow. Secret army. Just coming through oh this door. Oh, my God. Look at that. The Great Escape. Wow. Ooh. That's what they would have done. Look. That's how they would have tunnelled out, folks, when they'd done them uh, tunnels in the film The Great Escape there. Look. Harry Stalag Luft Free Underground. And there you can probably see the uh, picture drawing there of how they actually did it and the sort of route they had to take under the main uh, barracks out to the fence line there. Look at that. So look at this, folks. Look, these coats are all old originals. And this coat over here, I've seen on many times, many different occasions. This tells a story so far of this old jacket there. Now, you can see it there. And this is a really poignant story there. I'll let you read it for a second, folks.
So you'll see all the trees on this site, folks, have been planted in memorandum. Oh my God, M Butler at the bottom. Where? MP Butler. MP Butler. Oh God, yeah, look at that. Look. <laughs> KIA all the trees for you killed to pick. in action. Look at that. Look. <laughs> Out of all the trees for me to pick, look at that. Yeah. If you look around the whole site, folks, you'll see they've all got the little placards. Even down little by rose bushes, aren't there? And rose bushes, as Sharon says, and every one of them denotes people who have passed during that period. And when you think of it now, the tranquility on this site now compared to what it must have been like with the tension way back then. Amazing. Dot, 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 dash, dash, no, dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. That's SOS. Dot, dot, dot. Dash, dash, dash. That's it. If you do that, that means SOS. I don't know what that means, Harry. Help. Help. There you go. Look at this, folks. All this old radio control gear of the era as well. Look at it. Oh, that's the different layers of uh, clothing that you would wear as a air gunner. Look at that, amazing. You'd have that, 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 that all the different layers there. Look, Got heated boot liners. Well, it's probably very cold up in the, uh, in yeah, the air, wasn't it? That it was. These are the gun turrets over there, shall we? There's more around here. Look at them different gun turrets, look. From the different planes and stuff, look. And again, a 1930 pattern flying suit there. It looks like they're actually doing a recreation there, folks, of uh, a period so living cute. room. There we go, of the era. Look, what's that? What is it? The floor. Oh, oh the plastic's coming up, yeah. A... There's a draft somewhere. Look at that, look. Oh, the plastic's lifting up, folks. Look. <laughs> Yeah. There we go. Did you get it right? Yeah, all well, this is new, folks. The last oh, time no. we was here, this wasn't here. And I've just noticed this. I've got to show you this, folks. This is the Rolls Royce Merlin engine, which is uh, in the actual Lancaster bomber and many other planes. But look at this. Look at that. Look. What a fantastic piece of kit and what a distinctive sound them exhausts make. That's how they're coming out of the cylinder head. You can normally see flames jutting out of there as well this is a new function folks i've got this interactive things here just to practice one hold on hydraulic pump operates no you didn't i didn't touch anything you've pressed the button didn't you i went like that well, sensor then here we go hold on wait till you get the question oh that won't be a lot hold on a basic carburetor probably two pints i would say I might be wrong. You're no. wrong. That is in the Merlin. This is all related to the Merlin engine. Four pints. Yeah, I didn't know that. Look at that. My Merlin. Merlin engine, Sharon. How much does the Oh, I wouldn't know that. With no oil or exhaust. I'd say three, personally. Oh, that's it. Three. Three. Oh, 1,430 pounds. Never used the Merlin engine. There we go. Which one was that, folks? Two it's got to be the Mark IV, surely. Harry got it right. Mark II, I didn't know well that. Well done, Harry. Well done, Harry. One more question, then we'll move on. Harry, that was last oh, you got four out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Must do better, Harry. <laughs> I don't know. We've just come round into this shelter park, folks, and it is actually freezing around here, Sharon. Isn't it? No, need to be brave. No, it's really cold, folks. Look at that Jumo, Junkers Jumo 211D engine. Wow. Oh, you can go through there, look. Wow. It is, oh, it's really cold around here, Sharon. Mm. I'll tell you what, folks, this is unnaturally cold. Look, cockpit. 
Wow. Yeah. Well, oh, I'm sure it's a bit dark here, folks, but uh, what's this here? I don't know. Oh, look. Hope the door shut. Very cold here for some reason. I don't know why that is. Very cold. Oh. Wow. That in there, I don't know what that was, folks. It's really cold. That was unnaturally cold in that little bit there. And this is the uh, Greenwich Mean Time Meridian line there, as you can see, which runs straight through here. Uh, down there is obviously south back that way, which means that over there is north. And from this point, you've got east and west. So you'll be taking off to go to the east coast, Sharon. What way are they be going? Oh, okay. Over Europe. The goal's that way. That's right. So that's the way they would have been flying. That's ironic, uh, folks. Look, I just mentioned earlier on Jacko Jackson, who I knew very well, and uh, he was the pilot of Just Jane there, and also the City of Lincoln. That's the other Lancaster bomber that uh, flies over London or wherever. The only one that uh, is working here in the United Kingdom. And this little tree was there, obviously, in for a memorial. He obviously died in 2010. I didn't realise it was so long ago, folks. There you go. That's Jacko Jackson's tree. I'm clever, aren't I? <laughs> hey? I'm clever, aren't I? Yeah, well, that's what it was all about, Show Little simple things like that. Just like the sun rises in the east and sets in the west when we look up to our night sky or day sky. <laughs> anyway, we haven't shown you everything here, folks. There's a lot then more to have a look at. must come along. Yeah, do check it out. As I say, we'll leave the uh, details of the uh, area. It's East Kirkby. It's in Lincolnshire. It's not too far from Boston. Or Woodall Spa, where we are. We're probably about eight miles away from where we are in Woodall Spa. So, uh, yeah, do check it out. Very and good. it's a very good day out here, and there's loads more to see. We didn't spend a lot of time, obviously, going through everything with you. But, uh, yeah, just thought, thought we'd bring you along for our little journey. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Anyway, we're going to leave it here now for this video. We'll see you in the next video. And don't forget to take a look at our other vlogs if you're interested in the sort of stuff we get up to during the week. Or, what? Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Or also take a look at our cooking videos as well. No doubt all of you have come here to look at our vlogs because you watch our cooking videos. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye, bye. for now. Where's them kids, Sharon? I don't know. Don't tell Gary. We've lost them.